A different hairstyle or color can change a person's entire look. It can make a person look better or worse. Jean was about to enter her first day of college. She wanted a new look. Her current hairstyle was nice, but it was boring. She had it since she was a ninth grader. Her hair right now was straight, long, and blonde. She went into the hair salon and asked the hairstylist, What kind of look are you going for? the hairstylist asked. I want to look like a model, Jean said. Well, we can add layers to your hair. We can also make your hair more blonde, the hairstylist said. That sounds good, Jean said. Jean sat in the chair while the hairstylist cut her hair. Jean couldn't see herself in the mirror because she didn't have her glasses on. She just trusted the hairstylist. An hour later, the hairstylist said, Done. Jean put on her glasses and looked at herself. She looked totally different. She liked it, but felt strange. She could barely even recognize herself. Jean asked her friends and family what they thought. Most of them liked it. They said it made her look edgier, but very different. In fact, when she met up with her friends, they asked who she was. One of them even tried calling the police when Jean showed up in front of her house. When Jean was shopping with her friends at the mall, a model scout came up to her and asked if she would consider modeling. Jean said she would think about it and took his business card. The new hairstyle was really working out for her. Kelly's favorite holiday is Halloween. She loved pumpkin pie, pumpkin spice latte, dressing up, scary movies, and trick-or-treating. The sad thing, however, is that Kelly knows that she is too old for trick-or-treating. She is now 21 years old. She loved how she could get different kinds of candy for free. This Halloween, Kelly was going to babysit her 10-year-old cousin, Albert, and his friends. Kelly dressed up as a pirate. Her cousin and his friends dressed up as ghosts. Albert and his friends made Halloween-themed cupcakes. The frosting was orange and the sprinkles on top were black. Afterwards, they carved pumpkins. Albert asked, What should we do now, Kelly? Why don't you go trick-or-treating? She suggested. I'm too scared to talk to strangers, Albert said. Don't worry, I will go with you, Kelly said. All of them went to the house to the right. They knocked on the door and said, Trick or treat. The couple smiled and gave the kids a chocolate bar. Kelly wished they gave her one. They went to the next house and the family gave them gummy worms. The next house they went to was interesting. The couple gave them money. Kelly definitely wanted some. They went to a total of ten houses and got more than ten different types of candy. They all went back to Kelly's house. Kelly was sad looking at all their candy. Then, Albert and his friends gave Kelly a hug and said they loved hanging out with her. Ophelia was a night shift worker at a hospital. This meant that she worked late at night. Ophelia's work schedule was 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Ophelia would sleep during the day while most people were at work. For the first year of work, Ophelia had a hard time adjusting to the schedule. She had trouble sleeping during the afternoon. She was upset that she had to miss out on social events her friends hosted. It's still hard for Ophelia to adjust, but she is better at it. When she comes back from work, she goes to the gym for a few hours. Then she practices her knitting skills. Afterwards, she would make herself a healthy meal. Night shift workers often eat unhealthier than day shift workers. After lunch, she would watch her favorite TV show. After that, she would sleep. The hospital informed the employees that they could send requests to change the time of their shift. Ophelia was excited about this and immediately sent in a request to change her shift. A couple weeks later, the manager gave Ophelia a letter. The letter stated that her request was rejected. Ophelia was shocked. She went to her manager and asked him why. She said that many night shift workers who requested an earlier shift were elderly. Ophelia was only 25. The manager thought that the older employees needed an earlier shift more than Ophelia did. Ophelia was mad at first, but she thought about the older employees. Their bones were aching and they're tired. They do need it more than her. Janice is turning 21 today. Originally, she wanted to go to Las Vegas to celebrate. A lot of people go to Las Vegas for their 21st birthday because in the United States, you can legally drink at 21. However, Janice decided not to go because she wanted to save money to buy a new car. 
Janice decided that she just wanted to go to a nice restaurant with her friends. Janice's birthday was on a Tuesday, and she had class and work on Tuesdays. She always walked to class with her friend Austin. When she and Austin met up, she thought he would wish her a happy birthday, but he didn't. Austin has known her for years, and he would always remember her birthday. Janice tried to drop hints. I wonder what today is, she said. Just a Tuesday, nothing special. Janice was upset. She ignored him during class. After class, Janice went to work. She expected a few birthday cards or a cake, but nothing. She was surprised because employees would always get something for their birthdays. This made Janice upset. She didn't even want to go out to eat for her birthday anymore. When Janice got home, she questioned if anyone even cared about her. Her friend Lisa called her. Hey, can you open the door? We're here, Lisa said. I don't want to go out anymore, Janice said. Why not? Can you just open the door? We're already here, Lisa said. Janice opened the door. Surprise, her friends yelled. They had a puppy in their hands. Kathy, Denise, Lauren, Andre, Harrison, and David are best friends. They all live in San Francisco. They live in different places and have different jobs. But at the end of their work day, they would meet up in the same cafe. They also had different personalities, but somehow they would make it work. Kathy is a struggling writer. She is working on a fantasy novel and trying to get it published. Denise is a medical student at the University of California, San Francisco. Lauren is a TV screenwriter. Andre is also a medical student at the University of California, San Francisco. Harrison is an investment banker. David is a graphic designer. How did they all meet? Kathy and Denise were friends in college, and they moved to San Francisco together. They bumped into Lauren at a wine tasting event. The three of them became friends. Denise and Andre met at medical school, and Denise invited Andre to hang out with Kathy and Lauren at the museum. Lauren's cousin is Harrison. Harrison wanted a website for a company he worked at and hired David to design it. Lauren invited Harrison and David to come to the museum, too. When the six of them met up, they instantly became friends. Sometimes their different personalities caused fights. Kathy was shy and traditional. Denise was outspoken. Lauren was kind but also naive. Andre was funny. Harrison was smart but also greedy. David was bossy but also caring. Even though they were different, though, they all cared about each other. Eddie and Cynthia both went to the same high school. They had liked each other since ninth grade. Eddie and Cynthia met in math class. Cynthia was really good at math. She always scored the highest out of everyone. Eddie was having trouble with math. He kept getting F's. If he didn't bring his grade up to a C, he would have to repeat the class. The teacher asked Cynthia to help Eddie out for extra credit, and she said yes. Every day after school for two hours, Cynthia would help him. Eddie fell in love with her. He ended up with a B in the class. Eddie took Cynthia out to dinner to thank her. At dinner, they both fell for each other. They started dating. Everything was good. They never had fights and even talked about getting married one day. When senior year came around, though, they had to apply to college, and they didn't want to stop each other from going places. But they both wanted to stay together. Cynthia got into Harvard and wanted to major in math. Eddie did not get into Harvard. He got accepted to a school near Harvard, but thought it would be better for him to stay closer to home. Cynthia ended up going to Harvard, and Eddie ended up going to Florida State University. They tried to have a long-distance relationship, but it was hard. They broke up after their first year of college. After they graduated, however, they both worked in Florida. They got back together. Ruby always looked up to her cousin Wanda. Ruby was an only child in her family, so she saw Wanda as an older sister. Wanda was beautiful, smart, and talented. She had straight A's, played the piano, and had so many friends. Wanda also had a great sense of style. It was classy yet cute. Ruby was still in high school, but she knew she wanted to go to the same university as Wanda did. Wanda knew that Ruby looked up to her, and she appreciated that. 
For Christmas, Wanda got Ruby a sweater with her university's logo on it. Ruby was so happy when she got the sweater, she put it on immediately and wore it almost every day. One day in class, Ruby raised her hand to answer the teacher's question, and the teacher accidentally called her Wanda. I'm sorry, you just look a lot like her, the teacher said. Don't apologize. I'm flattered, Ruby said. Ruby was even in the same clubs in high school as Wanda was. Sometimes people made fun of Wanda for not having her own personality. However, the truth was Ruby was different from Wanda. Ruby was more goofy and girly. When college admission decisions came out, Ruby was so anxious to check the website to see if she got in. She closed her eyes and slowly opened them. She found out she got accepted. She called Wanda to thank her for reading her application. The next day, Wanda took Ruby to look at the school. Nicole was always insecure about herself. She didn't like how she looked. She thought she was too tall and skinny. People would always ask her how tall she is. She tried to gain weight, but she never could. Most people would love to be in Nicole's situation, though. Nicole didn't like how she was so shy. She wished she could easily talk to people and make new friends. Nicole didn't like her voice. She thought it was too low. Nicole's confidence was so low that her friends started to get annoyed with her. They kept telling her that she was fine, but Nicole would deny it. Nicole's mom encouraged her to join a sports team at school. Nicole did not want to because she didn't want to get rejected. After days of convincing, Nicole finally gave in to her mother's request. Nicole decided to try it out for the basketball team. She played when she was younger, but has not played in five years. It helped that Nicole was tall. When Nicole went to tryouts, she looked at all the people she was competing against. She started to compare herself to the other girls. They were all shorter than her, but they were more confident. Nicole tried to put them out of her mind. The coach asked the girls to shoot free throws, run short distance, then finally asked them to play a game. Nicole was doing well. She was surprised. She didn't realize that she still had basketball skills. Nicole made the team and felt more confident about herself. She knew she was good at something. Edward really liked Nancy, the Sadie Hawkins dance, where girls ask guys out was coming up. In other dances, guys usually ask girls out. Natalie liked Edward too, but he did not know. Natalie was thinking about asking Edward to the dance, but she was shy. Her friends eventually convinced Natalie to ask him. During the lunch break, Natalie and her friends went up to Edward at his usual lunch table. Hi, Edward. This song is for you, Natalie said. He looked shocked. Natalie took out her guitar. Her friends took out their instruments, too. Natalie played an original song. The song was about how they met on the first day of ninth grade. At the end of the song, Natalie asked, Will you go to Sadie with me? There was a long pause. Everyone around Edward was waiting for his response. Edward said yes, but he didn't look too happy. After school, Natalie asked Edward why he looked so upset when she asked him out. I really like you, but I'm not a dancer, Edward said. Natalie laughed. Who cares? No one is really good at dancing. The important thing is that you have fun, Natalie said. Edward nodded and decided to go out with her. At the dance, Edward felt awkward at first. Then Natalie started dancing, and it was bad. Edward laughed and started dancing, too. Even though they were both awkward, they had fun. Mildred was very superstitious. She believed that black cats and walking under ladders were unlucky. Her friends and family would make fun of her for her being so superstitious. Her brother tried to explain to her that superstitions are not real. She never believed him, though. There have even been times when she went out of her way because of superstitions. One time, Mildred was very scared to take a math test. There is a superstition that says that carrying a rabbit's foot brings good luck. Although Mildred could not get a real rabbit's foot, she bought a keychain of a rabbit's foot. Another time, Mildred's friends invited her to get pizza at a new restaurant. Mildred was about to go inside the restaurant when she saw the restaurant's phone number included 666. 666 is considered to be unlucky, so she left. Another time it was raining pretty hard. When Mildred went into the mall, she noticed that a woman still had her umbrella opened. 
unopened umbrella indoors is supposed to be bad luck. She ran up to the woman and asked if she could close her umbrella. The woman looked at her with a disturbed face. Don't tell me what to do, she said. The woman continued to walk around the mall with her umbrella open, just to annoy Mildred, who wanted to leave the mall immediately to avoid any bad luck. Her mom convinced her to stay. Mildred, nothing bad is going to happen, she said. Mildred stayed in the mall for four hours. Her mom was right. Nothing bad happened. Irene has a secret. Her mom is the principal at her high school. She doesn't want anyone to know because her classmates would think that she gets special treatment. Not even her friends know about the secret. When her friends ask to go over to her house, she just says that her parents don't allow guests. Irene's mom also never told anyone that her daughter goes to the high school she works at. Bring Your Mom to Campus Day was coming up, and Irene usually told her friends in the past that her mom was out of town. What does your mom even do? her friend asked. She is a cancer researcher, so she travels a lot. Funny enough, Irene's mom was always at Bring Your Mom to Campus Day. The vice principal once asked her, Do you have a daughter? Irene's mom said, Yes, she is in college now. Irene was very close to getting an A in her calculus class. There was only one exam left. Irene would have to get 100% on the exam to push her grade to an A. The teacher offered the students extra credit if they brought their mom to bring your mom to campus day. Irene decided that this year was going to be the year that she told her secret to everyone. Irene told her mom that she wanted to tell everyone about their relationship. Irene's mom agreed. On Bring Your Mom to Campus Day, Irene brought her mom to her calculus class. Hi, our principal. What brings you here? asked the calculus teacher. I'm actually Irene's mom, she said. Stuart and Brenda are having a baby together. Brenda is seven months pregnant. Stuart and Brenda still don't know if the baby is a boy or a girl. The doctor had asked them if they wanted to know, and they said no. They do not want to know because they want to be surprised. They think that it will make the day of the birth more special. Their friends and families do not approve. Stuart's mom wants to know the sex of the baby because she wants to know what color bib to buy. If it's a boy, then she will buy a blue bib. If it's a girl, then she will buy a pink bib. Stuart's mom has been nagging him to ask the doctor about the baby's sex. Stuart decides to listen to his mom's suggestion. Brenda is furious. She tells Stuart not to listen to his mom. Stuart is conflicted. He loves his wife, but he also loves his mom. Stuart decides to secretly go to the hospital to ask the doctor for the information. The doctor tells Stuart that the baby is a boy. Stuart tells his mom the news. She is happy. She goes to the store to buy a lot of blue clothes. Stuart tells his mom that she can't tell Brenda. Stuart's mom agrees. The next day, Brenda has a baby shower. Stuart's mom is also invited. When it is time for Brenda to open the presents, Stuart's mom hands her her gift. Brenda slowly opens it, and it is a blue backpack. At that moment, Brenda knows she is having a boy. Joseph and his wife Christina currently live in San Francisco. Christina is pregnant. She is a makeup artist at the mall. She does not make much money, but the job makes her happy. Joseph is an investment banker. He makes a good amount of money, but does not like his job. He feels like he does the same thing every day and like he is not making a difference. He also does not like his co-workers. He feels like his co-workers only care about money. Back when Joseph was in school, he dreamed of being a college professor. He liked teaching because he loved the feeling when his students understood something. He also wanted to be around people who loved to learn. He believed that knowledge is power. Joseph wanted to quit his job at the bank. Christina did not want him to, though. How are we going to afford to take care of the baby, she asked. Maybe we can give the baby to my brother and his wife for a couple of years, Joseph suggested. That is ridiculous. If we do that, then the baby is pretty much theirs, she said. Only for two years, Joseph said. You need to think of the baby, Christina said. Why don't you get a higher paying job then, Joseph asked. It's not easy, you know. I didn't finish high school, Christina said. This was a sensitive topic for Christina. Joseph knew that and stopped talking. Joseph stopped talking. He decided to stick with his job at the bank. Julia always felt average. She did not have any special talents. But she also was not bad at anything in particular. She always got B's in class. 
She was neither fat nor skinny. She could run a mile, but not much more. Most people felt neutral about her. She wore nice clothes, but nothing unique. She wanted to be better than average at something. But whenever she tried, she fell short. When she took an advanced math class, she found herself struggling. She joined the basketball team, but she was not very good. As Julia was walking to school, she suddenly felt something in her head. It didn't hurt, so it was not a headache. All of a sudden, she saw a cat stuck in a tree in her mind. It was almost like a vision. That was weird, she thought. She continued walking to school. Then, she saw a cat just like the one in her vision. It climbed up the tree and could not come back down. It was stuck. Julia realized that she could see the future. Julia would get her visions randomly. She wished she could control it, but she could not. Sometimes she would get five a day, and other times she would get them every two weeks. Julia loved her visions, though. She felt that it was her special power that gave her advantages. One time she had a vision that her friend was going to die in a car accident, so Julia made her friend not drive that day. Julia did not tell anyone about her visions. She felt like people would not believe her. Timothy loved to play games ever since he was young. He was good at almost every single game. He was extremely competitive and hated to lose. He decided to go to the arcade to put his skills to the test. He thought this would be a fun way to use his skills and be rewarded. He invited all his friends to come since he did not want to go alone. At the arcade there were all types of games. The games ranged from beginner to expert level. Some of the games required no skills and just pure luck. Timothy wanted to try the games that were not based on luck. He decided to warm up with claw machines. He thought these required coordination and precision. However, he soon realized these machines relied a little bit on luck to pick up the prize. He quickly moved on to shooting target games. He also played basketball games. Basketball was more suited towards his skills. He was able to win prizes in both. He also played games with his friends. It was fun competing against them, even when he lost. Sometimes he felt discouraged when he lost, but he kept trying. At the end of the day, he had many prizes to take home. He realized that he had spent a lot of money playing these games. Timothy told his friends that he had a fun time and hopes to come again, but not too often. He traded prizes with his friends, and they all took a photo to remember this day. It was hard to eat healthy at school. It was even harder when Jessica entered college. Everywhere she went, it seems as if she was surrounded by unhealthy food. From the dining hall pizza to the coffee shops at every corner, it was hard for her to eat healthy every day. She also had to balance many activities and classes. She felt she had no time to cook or find healthy food. She often stopped at fast food places and got quick snacks. The unhealthy food often left her feeling tired. She did not have the energy at the end of the day and often felt sleepy. She decided she needed to alter her eating habits. She wanted to stop eating so unhealthily, but she did not know how. She decided to start by cutting out coffee. At first it was hard since she drank coffee almost every day. By the end of the week she felt better. She was also saving a lot of money by not having to buy a drink every day, which quickly added up. The next step she took was to incorporate more healthy food into her diet. Instead of eating burgers and sandwiches so often, she decided to eat salads every other day. She found that salads were just as quick and cheap as burgers. This made her feel more refreshed and energized. She found herself less sleepy and more focused in class. The salad even tasted better than the burger. Jessica felt so good with her diet change, she planned on cooking once a week every week. She felt ambitious and loved the change she was making. Sarah found herself alone at home most of the time. Her parents were always at work and she had no siblings. Although Sarah had many friends, she wanted to get a pet. She was tired of being bored at home. However, Sarah did not know what pet she wanted. She kept changing her mind and fell in love with all types of animals. She decided to go to the pet store and let her heart decide when she got there. She went to her local pet store. It was only a five-minute walk from her house. She walked with her parents, who agreed to let her pick out a pet. 
Sarah vowed to take responsibility and be super careful with her new pet. The pet store worker greeted them and showed them around. There were all types of pets, including reptiles and furry mammals. Sarah loved the dogs and cats. She thought they were cute and playful. She decided to also look at some fish. She enjoyed the colors and their beautiful nature, but she wanted something more interactive. When she came across the bunnies, she knew that they were the pet for her. She knew a bunny was easier to take care of than a dog, but still playful. She picked up a bunny and fell in love with him. He was brown and white. She decided to name him Chester. Her new furry friend also liked her. Her parents approved and were also fond of her new pet. Brenda was moving into her apartment today. She needed to bring in a lot of things since the apartment was empty. There was no way she could fly with such large items. She needed to go shopping for a couch and a desk. Brenda decided this would be a perfect opportunity to road trip with her family. They could help her move into her new apartment. Her new apartment was located three hours from her current house. Brenda was excited about moving and starting her new year. She was moving to an apartment near her school. She would be living there with three new people she had never met. She was a little nervous to meet them. She was scared that she might not like them or they might not like her. She was excited also. She was excited for what the new year would bring. The new year could be filled with a lot of new memories and exciting events. Brenda made a list of things she needed to buy just in case she forgot anything. She separated her list by categories. She had a lot of stuff from home that she could bring to save money. She took her chair and her laptop from home. She also brought a lot of clothes and cooking supplies. Her parents agreed to help her shop for furniture once they got there. They were going to help her pick her bed frame and her mattress. She also needed to get a new couch for the living room. Although stressful, Brenda was ready to tackle it all. Ricky was good at everything. He had always gotten A's in all his classes. He excelled in all subjects and never had any trouble with the material. This year, he was taking calculus. This was a subject he had never taken before. He was struggling a lot and did not understand the material. His teacher handed his first test back. Ricky was shocked at his score. He had failed the test. It was his first time to fail anything. Ricky did not know what to do. He did not want to ask for help because he did not know how. This was his first time struggling and he had no idea how to approach his problem. He started talking to the teacher. He asked the teacher if there was a mistake or if there was any way he could retake the test. The teacher explained to him that it was reasonable that he did not do well on the first test. She gave a list of books and websites that may help him and also referred him to some tutors. Another suggestion she made was to reach out to friends and form a study group. He liked the idea of a study group because he felt more comfortable asking his friends for help. He asked his friends if they would like to form a study group. They loved the idea. They also were relieved since they were also struggling with calculus. They decided to meet twice a week at their school's library. They did homework together and went through each problem step by step. Before the next test, they studied extra long. They did several practice problems and helped each other along the process. Perhaps Ricky would not get everything correct on the next test, but he felt more confident. Catherine did not know what to do this summer. All her friends either had a job or were going traveling. Catherine was nervous because she did not hear back from any of the organizations she applied for. She applied to a lot of different internships and jobs. The wait was long and agonizing for her. Finally, she received an email. The email congratulated her on getting the internship which was a teaching position in Japan. She was going to be teaching lessons on leadership in Japan to young high school students. Catherine was so excited to receive this internship. This was her top choice. She was nervous she would not get it because there were many applicants. It was extremely competitive. She was excited to travel and also meet many high school students. Catherine was passionate about education and leadership. This internship was perfect for her. She was nervous to travel abroad since this was her first time. She did not know what to expect in a foreign country. She also did not speak Japanese, which may be challenging for her. The challenges did not scare her. She was ready for the internship. She planned her trip early and began to make lists of things she needed to bring and what she needed to do. 
She also met with past interns and asked them about their experiences. She wanted to be as prepared for the trip as possible. Catherine wanted to do the best job she could and make a big impact on the students. Danielle decided to make sushi with her brother Jonathan. They both love sushi and cooking. They thought this would be the perfect way to bond with each other and have fun. Sushi was something they never made. They needed to buy all the supplies to make the perfect sushi. They read recipes and watched videos on how to make sushi. Even if it was not perfect, Danielle was sure it would taste good. Jonathan was in charge of buying the supplies. He stopped by his local Japanese supermarket. This was one of his favorite markets because of its cheap prices and quality products. He started by looking for the seaweed and rice. He quickly found those in the same aisle. He then began to pick the seafood they would use. He decided on salmon, tuna, and eel. Danielle's favorite was salmon. He also got some cucumbers, carrots, and avocados to add extra flavor. Jonathan brought back his supplies home. They were ready to make the sushi. They set everything up in the kitchen. They were ready to roll. They divided the tasks. One person was in charge of preparing the sushi. The other person was in charge of rolling the sushi and cutting nicely into pieces. They needed to make enough for themselves and their parents. They even made extras. After all their hard work, they ate their delicious sushi and watched a movie together. The sushi was delicious and tasted really fresh. Their parents approved of their homemade sushi. Every day Tiffany jogged five miles around her house. She loved running around her neighborhood. It made her feel refreshed for the rest of the day. She felt more healthy and productive after her runs. She did not always run the same route. She liked to change her route to make running more fun. Sometimes she ran to grocery stores and sometimes she ran to her friend's house. It was a new journey each time. In order to run, she had to have the right gear. She always wore quality athletic clothes. She had to wear good running shoes that were durable. She kept her hair in a high ponytail so her hair would not interfere with her face. She kept a water bottle with her at all times to continue to stay hydrated. Sometimes she ran at the gym, but she preferred the fresh air. There was something about seeing the trees and cars passing by that made her happy. She always listened to music when she ran. The music kept her motivated and distracted her from the feeling of being tired. Today she decided to run to a movie theater. She was meeting a friend there later. She had her water, music, and a smile ready. She started running early so that she would be there on time. Rebecca was going on her daily jog when she saw a lonely puppy on the sidewalk. The puppy was alone. She did not see its owner anywhere in sight. The puppy had a collar. She checked the collar for an address or identification, but there was none. The puppy followed her and began to play with her. The puppy seemed to really like Rebecca. Rebecca loved dogs and did not mind at all. She wanted to help this puppy find its owner. She did not want to just abandon him. She decided to take a picture of the dog and post flyers around her town. She hoped that the puppy was local to the area. For the time being, she took the puppy home. She bought dog food and prepared a nice area for the puppy to sleep. The puppy seemed confused in its new environment. It was a little shy, but it showed a liking to Rebecca. The next day, Rebecca posted flyers all over town. She added her phone number in case anyone wanted to contact her about the dog. She hoped that she could find its owner. She decided to take the dog for a walk. She started to form a connection with the dog, but she knew she could not keep him. A few hours later, a woman contacted her about the dog. She was so relieved Rebecca had found him. Rebecca returned the puppy to the woman and could see how happy both of them were. Rebecca felt great and decided she would get a puppy in the future. The vase in the middle of the house was broken. Someone had knocked down the family's vase. The mom was furious. She had treasured that vase and was upset that it was now broken. She did not know who broke it since she was not at home that day. The only two people who were home were her daughter Violet and son Harry. She asked them who broke the vase. Both of them were quiet. They refused to answer, in fear of getting in trouble. She threatened to punish both of them if they did not give her an answer. They began to blame each other. They began to yell and tell their stories at the same time. 
she told each to explain their sides. Violet explained that they were playing tag and Harry tagged her while pushing her at the same time, causing her to knock the vase over. Harry explained that Violet tried to dodge his tag and hit the vase. There was no way for the mom to tell who was actually right. The mom decided it was an innocent mistake. She did not punish either of them. She just told them not to play tag in the house anymore. Harry and Violet had to be more careful next time. They apologized to their mom. They both felt terrible for upsetting her. They decided to be super good and started cleaning up the house. He wakes up. He sees the sun rise. He brushes his teeth. His teeth are white. He puts on his clothes. His shirt is blue. His shoes are yellow. His pants are brown. He goes downstairs. He gets a bowl. He pours milk and cereal. He eats. He gets the newspaper. He reads. He goes to class. There is an empty seat in front. He sits in the seat. He looks around. There are different people. He says hi to the girl next to him. She smiles. The teacher comes in. She closes the door. Everyone is silent. The first day of school begins. She is thirsty. She gets a glass of water. She begins to walk. She drops the glass. There is water on the floor. The puddle is big. She gets a mop. She wipes the water off. The floor is clean. She gets another glass of water. She drinks it. She is happy. Casey wants a new car. She needs money. She decides to babysit. She takes care of the child. She feeds him lunch. She reads him a story. The story is funny. The child laughs. Casey likes him. The child's mom comes home. The child kisses Casey. Casey leaves. She will babysit him again. Sam is a doctor. He takes care of people. He smiles at them. He gives them medicine. He gives stickers to the younger patients. The younger patients like him. They see him when they are sick. He makes them feel better. This makes him happy. He loves his job. He goes home proud. Jill and Jody are twins. They look the same, but they act differently. Jill likes sports. She is good at basketball and golf. She is also loud. She talks all day. Jody likes reading. She can read 300 pages a day. She is also quiet. She does not like to talk. Jill and Jody still love each other. The book is in the library. Jody goes to the library. She wants to borrow it. She uses her card to check it out. She takes the book back home. She sits on the couch. She reads the first page. It is good. She reads 20 more pages. It is not that good anymore. Jody returns the book. Brenda wants to have a picnic. She gets a basket. She puts sandwiches in the basket. The sandwiches are healthy. They are also tasty. She drives to the park. She lays out a blanket. She hears a sound. It is raining. 
She folds the blanket back. She puts the food in the basket. Mary goes to the store. The store is very big. The store sells bakery goods. Mary sees a carrot cake. She does not like carrots. She sees a banana nut muffin. It looks good. It costs two dollars. She buys it. She takes the wrapper off. She takes a big bite. It is crunchy on the outside. It is soft on the inside. Linda loves the park. There is so much to do. First, she looks at the sky. One cloud looks like a dog. Another cloud looks like a sheep. Later, she feeds the ducks. They are hungry. Linda throws breadcrumbs. The ducks enjoy the food. Finally, Linda watches the sun go down. It is beautiful. Sandra cannot see. A bird looks like a pillow. A pillow looks like a marshmallow. A marshmallow looks like a tree. A tree looks like a bee. Sandra goes to a doctor. The doctor gives her glasses. She puts them on. She can see the doctor. His eyes are blue. Everything is clear. Carol walks to the store. The store sells fruits. The fruits are colorful. Strawberries and apples are red. Tangerines and pumpkins are orange. Lemons are yellow. Limes are green. Blueberries are blue. Grapes and plums are purple. Carol's favorite color is purple. She buys a plum. She leaves the store. She bites the plum. It is tasty. He wakes up early. He is tired. He needs breakfast. Breakfast will give him energy. He goes to the kitchen. He pours milk into the bowl. He sees the wheat cereal box. Wheat cereal is healthy. He opens the box. There is a toy inside. It is a small car. She goes to the mall. There are many stores at the mall. She sees a clothing store. She goes inside. There are many different shirts. Some shirts have flowers. Other shirts have stripes. She gets a flowered shirt. It is pink and white. She tries it on. She looks in the mirror. The shirt looks great. His house is white. White is too boring. He goes to the paint store. He looks at the different colors. He sees the red bucket. Red is too daring. He sees the blue bucket. Blue is too sad. He sees the yellow bucket. Yellow is too bright. He sees the green bucket. Green is perfect. The beach is fun. Some people swim in the water. They see who is the fastest. The winner gets a surfboard. Some people lie down on the sand. They want to relax. The kids make sand castles. They try to make the castles big and tall. Later, the water washes the sand castles away. The kids make new ones. The garden is beautiful. The garden is big. There are many flowers. There are pink flowers. There are purple flowers. There are small flowers. There are big flowers. The gardener plants more flowers. 
There is also a fountain. Kids sit next to it. Kids throw coins in it. Their parents smile. She plays basketball. The game is intense. She stares at her teammate. Her teammate passes the ball to her. She runs to her team's side of the court. She dunks the ball in the basket. Her team is happy. They hug her. They shout her name. The people in the bleachers shout, "Hooray!" Her basketball team won the big game. They want to celebrate. They have to buy some things. They split the work. Patricia goes to the bakery shop. She orders a cake shaped like a basketball. Linda gets the decorations. She buys bottles of bubbles and water balloons. All the team members meet at Mary's house. They celebrate. She stands at the starting line. She wishes her competitors good luck. They are racing to see who is the fastest. She is nervous. Her hands are already sweating. The whistle goes off. She starts to run. She starts slowly for a few minutes. Later, she speeds up. Her competitors are slow. They are tired. She reaches the finish line. She wins. Miss Smith is a great teacher. She makes math look easy. She also teaches her students how to be great people. Miss Smith feels sick one day. Another teacher substitutes. Mr. Johnson teaches the class instead. Mr. Johnson is a bad teacher. He makes math confusing. He also yells at the students a lot. The students want Miss Smith back. He likes to collect stickers. He likes the way they feel and look. He has over five hundred. He has animal stickers. They are shiny and big. He has fruit-shaped stickers. They smell good. He even has stickers of bugs. They almost look real. He shows his sticker collection to everyone. Her family is going to another state. It is far away. It will take them forty-eight hours to get there. They have to prepare. Her mom brings a map so that she knows where to go. Her dad buys sandwiches and bottles of water. She brings a camera. Now they can remember this moment forever. Karen lives in California. Her brother lives in Ohio. They miss each other. They only see each other once a year. Karen calls him every day. She talks about their parents. She also tells him about her day at school. He tells her about his day at college. They never want to say goodbye to each other. Lisa and her grandma go to the beach. They ride their bikes. Grandma still rides like a young girl. She is very fast. Lisa is slow. But she is willing to practice. The two ride their bikes for four hours. They decide to relax. Lisa gives her grandma a hug. He hears a sound from outside. He looks out his window. The newspaper has arrived. He loves the newspaper. It's just so interesting. He reads the cover story. It is about a homeless man who won the lottery. 
Then he looks at the cartoons. They are so funny. He loves the newspaper. The Johnsons realize that they have new neighbors. They visit the Taylors and say hello. The Taylors invite them in. They make spaghetti for the Johnsons to eat. The adults talk about the neighborhood. They also talk about what their jobs are. The kids all play in the Taylors' backyard. They get along well. The Taylors feel at home. She goes to the movie theater. The movie starts to play. A monster appears on the screen. She screams. She is scared. She continues to watch. The screen is completely black. She reaches for some popcorn. The monster screams "boo." She jumps and drops all her popcorn. It is time for the show. He plays a doctor in the play. He is nervous. He goes on the stage. He looks at his audience. There are so many people. They are all staring at him. He is about to speak. He forgets his lines. He goes back. Stephen walks around his town. He trips over something. He looks down. It is a wallet. There are five hundred dollars cash, credit cards, and a driver's license in the wallet. Stephen needs to return this to the owner. He takes the wallet to his town's lost and found center. Now the owner can find it. I drive my car. It suddenly stops. I go outside to see what is wrong. It's a flat tire. I need to call a tow truck service, but I do not have my phone with me. I see another car coming. I ask the driver if I could borrow his phone. He says, "Of course." What a nice person! David, Jennifer, and Susan try to find something to do. David wants to eat at a restaurant. Jennifer and Susan already ate. Jennifer wants to sing at a karaoke. David and Susan have sore throats. Susan wants to play tennis. David and Jennifer are lazy. What do they do now? She goes to the market. She wants to buy blueberry muffins. She is not sure if it tastes good. She finds an employee and asks for a sample. The employee cuts a small piece and gives it to her. She tries it. It is good. She buys the pack of muffins. She jumps into her bed. She is ready to sleep. She hears a noise. She looks out her window. She sees a dog howling. She goes outside. The dog is sad. His owner does not feed him. She gets the dog some food. She plays catch with him. His tail wags. Edward is a secretary in a doctor's office. He does a lot of things. He greets patients. He asks for their information. He records their height and weight. He tells them how long they have to wait. He answers phone calls. He always knows what to say. Edward also keeps the files organized. She is a maid for a rich family. She does a lot of things. She does the laundry. She washes the windows. She cooks meals. She cleans the tables. She wipes the floors. 
she does not like cleaning. However, she likes taking care of the children. She reads to them. She picks them up from school. He walks into his house. The door is already open. The windows are broken. Clothes are all over the place. The furniture is turned upside down. He sees a person in a mask. He is being robbed. He makes sure the robber does not see him. He calls the police. The police arrive quickly. They arrest the bad guy. The hairstylist loves his job. He provides many services. He cuts people's hair shorter. It's very easy for him to do. He charges only five dollars. He straightens hair. This is hard for him to do. He charges one hundred dollars. He dyes customers' hair. He lets customers pick any color. He charges fifty dollars. People think his prices are fair. She reaches into her pocket. Her cell phone is gone. She looks under her bed. All she sees are some coins. She looks under her couch. All she sees are some pencils. She has an idea. She calls her cell phone number with another phone. She hears a ring. It is coming from the kitchen. She sees her phone above the microwave. She goes to the park. She sees a lot of squirrels. They are small. They are brown. They have furry tails. They run really fast. They have big eyes. They are cute. She goes up to a squirrel. She feeds a nut to the squirrel. The squirrel takes it and runs away. She cannot sleep. She tries exercising. She runs three miles around her house. She does one hundred jumping jacks. She dances. She goes back to bed. She tries to sleep. She still cannot sleep. She asks her older sister what to do. Her older sister sings her a lullaby. She falls asleep. It is Christmas time. Miss Miller goes to a store. She shops for gifts for her students. She buys twenty stockings. She buys candy canes. She buys school supplies. She buys gingerbread cookies. She puts the items in the stockings. She goes to the cashier. The cashier tells Miss Miller what a nice teacher she is. He has a job interview soon. He wants to be the manager. He needs to prepare. He goes to the barber. He gets a haircut. He goes to the mall. He buys a suit. He goes home. He prints out his resume. He goes to the company. He takes a deep breath. He is ready. She gets an allowance from her parents. They give her ten dollars a week. She wants more. She asks her parents nicely. They say no. She tries to change their minds. She washes their cars. She makes them dinner. She compliments them. Her parents decide to give her a raise. She will get fifteen dollars a week. The big bully enters the cafeteria. He goes to the front of the line. The students do not say anything. They are smaller than him. They are scared. The lunch lady sees the bully being mean. 
she tells him to get out. The students cheer for the lunch lady. He opens his new bakery shop. The shop sells cake, bread, and muffins. He puts a large sign outside. It says, 50% off everything. He hopes to get a lot of customers. Many people start coming in. He greets the customers. They buy his bakery goods. He thanks them for coming. She eats a granola bar. She drops a crumb in the kitchen. She does not realize it. She goes to watch a movie. She comes back to the kitchen. She sees many ants. The ants are all near the crumb. She gets a broom. She sweeps the ants and the crumb away. People go to the park to see the fireworks. They lay out their blankets. They sit on them and watch. The fireworks are amazing. Some are big and loud. Others are small and quiet. The fireworks appear in different colors. Some are red. Some are green. Some are gold. She goes to the library. She looks at the mystery section. She takes two books from the shelf. She goes to the romance section. She does not take any books from that shelf. The romance books seem boring. She takes some cooking magazines. She goes to the checkout desk. It is raining. She wears a yellow raincoat. Her body is warm. She wears a knitted hat. Her head is warm. She wears a gray scarf. Her neck is warm. She wears rain boots. Her feet are warm. She wears mittens. Her hands are warm. She gets an umbrella. She goes outside. She pours the cereal into a bowl. She needs milk. She goes to the refrigerator. She gets the milk. She pours the milk into the bowl. She tastes it. Yuck! It tastes bad. She checks the milk carton. The expiration date was last week. She throws it away. No one should drink it. Miss White goes to a clothing store. The dresses are on sale. She buys a dress for her daughter. It is blue with yellow flowers. Miss White takes the dress home. Her daughter tries it on. It doesn't fit. It is too tight. Miss White goes back to the store. She wants her money back. The cashier says, Sorry, all sales are final. Ruth is a lifeguard. She wears a bright red shirt. She has a whistle. She sits on a tall chair. She looks at the swimmers at the beach. She makes sure everything is okay. She looks out for danger. When people are drowning, she saves them. People like her. She makes them feel safe. Ruth loves her job. Mr. Green wants his students to work together on a project. Anthony, Brian, and Carol are all in one group. Anthony is lazy. He does not do anything. Brian and Carol have to do all the work. They cannot finish. Mr. Green is upset. 
Brian and Carol tell Mr. Green that Anthony didn't do anything. Mr. Green gives them one more day to finish. She knits a lot of things. She knits scarves. She knits hats. She knits sweaters. She knits mittens. She wears what she makes. She wears them for winter. She stays warm. She gives the stuff she knits to her friends too. Her friends love them. She also sells what she knits. Her customers buy them. She looks at her phone. It is three inches long and two inches wide. She loves her phone. She uses it all the time. She brings it everywhere. She talks to her friends on it. She plays games on it. She plans her schedule on it. She checks her email on it. Winter break starts soon. Joseph is so excited. He can't stop smiling. He can't wait. He taps his foot. He plays with his pencils. He looks at the clock. He thinks of the snow. He is ready to make snowballs. He is ready to go skiing. She is thirsty. She wants a smoothie. She gets a blender. She puts the strawberries inside. Next, she pours milk inside. Finally, she adds some sugar. She presses the button. The blender mixes the ingredients. She pours the liquid into a glass. She drinks some. It tastes delicious. She drinks all of it. She cleans the blender. Everyone knows that practice makes perfect. Michelle practices swimming once every two weeks. She is not that good. She gets third place. Sarah practices once a week. She is better than Michelle. She gets second place. Sharon practices every day. She is very good. She gets first place. He looks at his stuffed bear. It is six inches tall. It is light brown. It has blue eyes. It is wearing a striped scarf. It is soft. He brings it everywhere. He brings it to school. He brings it to soccer practice. He brings it to restaurants. He even brings it to weddings. High school students get lockers. Lockers are awesome. You can put books in it. You can put food in it. You can put a first aid kit in it. Thanks to lockers, you don't have to carry so much stuff. You can even decorate your lockers. You can stick posters in it. There are a lot of skunks in the park. The skunks spray their odor. The park smells very bad now. The family goes to the park for a picnic. They have lots of food. They smell something funny. They see the skunks. They do not want to eat anymore. They go home. Kimberly walks outside. She likes looking at her neighborhood. She also likes the fresh air. She bumps into someone. She looks at him. It is an old friend. He smiles. He says he likes the fresh air too. They hug. 
They talk about their memories. They laugh. Mary does well on her test. She smiles. Patricia wins the drawing contest. She smiles. David watches a great movie. He smiles. Mary, Patricia, and David are happy. Linda breaks her leg. She goes to the hospital. Barbara gets last place in the race. Jeff does bad on his test. Linda, Barbara, and Jeff are sad. She turns on the TV. Her favorite TV show is on. It is 30 minutes long. It is about the slowest animals on earth. She has a slow animal herself. It is a turtle. The turtle is quiet and cute. It is green. She watches TV with her turtle. She is very talented. She is good at taking tests. She is good at dancing. She is good at singing. She is good at teaching. She is good at fishing. She is good at playing the cello. She is good at making scarves. She is good at running. She is good at cooking. He hears a loud noise. He looks out the window. He sees a motorcycle. It is on the road. It is black and silver. It has two wheels. There is a man on the motorcycle. He wears a helmet. He wears sunglasses. He wears a leather jacket. He is riding the motorcycle. It is time for the award ceremony. She gets the first place medal. It is circular. It is gold. It has a picture of a ballet dancer. She deserves the medal. The audience cheers. Her parents scream her name. Her brother throws a rose at her. She bows. He eats a lot of candy. He needs to clean his teeth now. He does not want cavities. He goes to the bathroom. He flosses between his teeth. He grabs his toothbrush. He brushes his teeth up and down. He rinses his mouth. His teeth look white. Finally, he uses mouthwash. She loves ketchup. She puts ketchup on fried chicken. She puts ketchup on french fries. She puts ketchup on eggs. She puts ketchup on hamburgers. She puts ketchup on hot dogs. She puts ketchup on fried shrimp. She puts ketchup on sandwiches. She even puts ketchup on candy. Sometimes she drinks ketchup. She wants to make a peanut butter sandwich. It is easy to make. She goes to the market. She buys what she needs. She goes back home. She goes to the kitchen. She takes out a knife and puts it in the peanut butter jar. She spreads the peanut butter on two slices of bread. She puts the slices together and takes a bite. Magazines are fun to read. There is usually someone famous on the cover. Sometimes it is an actress. Sometimes it is a politician. Sometimes it is a chef. 
You can flip through the pages of a magazine. There are interesting stories. The stories are usually about important events. Some are sad. Some are happy. It is daytime. The sky is bright blue. The sun is shining. There are many clouds in the sky. She looks at them. The clouds have different shapes. One of them looks like a heart. Another looks like a bird. She continues to look at the clouds. Summer ends. Autumn begins. Autumn is perfect. It is not too hot like summer. It is not too cold like winter. She wakes up. She looks out her window. The leaves are falling. Some leaves are orange. Some leaves are brown. She sees her dad raking the leaves. She goes outside. She helps her dad. The young girl is hungry. Her parents do not feel like cooking. They go to a restaurant nearby. A waitress takes them to an empty table. The family sits down. The waitress gives them menus. The family looks at them. They order spaghetti and lobster. They wait for their foods. He works at the grocery store. He is the manager. He has a different uniform from his co-workers. His is red. His co-workers' uniforms are blue. He makes sure everyone is doing their job. He tells them how to do better. He goes around the store. He asks customers if they're okay. She is going to a party. She has to dress nicely. She puts on a pearl necklace. She puts red lipstick on her lips. She wears a long white dress. She puts on sparkly shoes. She puts diamond earrings on her ears. She puts a ruby ring on her finger. She is ready to leave the house. It is snowing. She is cold. She puts on a jacket. She puts a scarf around her neck. She puts mittens on her hands. She sits close to the fireplace. Her dad taps her on the shoulder. She turns around. He gives her a cup of hot chocolate. She is excited. He goes to his backyard. He sees something. It is small and slimy. It is a lizard. He puts it on his hand. He brings it inside his house. He shows it to his parents. He tells them he wants to keep it. They say no. They say lizards need to be outside. He goes to his backyard. He lets the lizard go. He likes apples. His neighbor has an apple tree. He walks to his neighbor's house. He knocks on the door. Miss Parker opens it. She says hello. He asks her if he could get some apples. She lets him. He picks the best apples. He tastes one. It is sweet. He lives in a tall building. He lives on the hundredth floor. He wakes up. He looks out the window. He sees the sun rise. He sees other buildings. He sees the mountains. He looks down. The people look so small. 
The stores look small too. What an interesting view. She goes to the carnival. She enters the pie eating contest. She sits down on a chair. There are many pies in front of her. She cannot use her hands. She begins to eat. She eats the apple pie first. It takes her five minutes to finish it. She eats ten more pies. He has two jackets with zippers. One of them is light blue. The other one is brown. He has two jackets without zippers. One of them has his name on it. The other one has his high school's name on it. He has two long jackets. One of them has buttons. The other one does not. He likes all his jackets. She has two pairs of high heels. One of them has laces. The other one has a zipper. She has two pairs of running shoes. One of them is shiny. The other one is bright. She has two pairs of ballet flats. One of them is pink. The other one is brown. She wears her shoes to parties. He plays basketball. He wants to play for the Los Angeles Lakers. He goes to the basketball court every day. He practices his free throws. He stands before the free throw line. He throws the basketball in the net. He misses. He tries again. It goes in the net this time. He practices for two more hours. Basketball is about teamwork. Teammates must be able to pass the ball. Robert is far from the hoop. He passes the ball to Edward. Edward catches it. He is far from the hoop too. He passes the ball to Mark. Mark catches it. Mark is close to the hoop. He throws the ball in. It goes in the net. Laura and Donald play tennis together. They go to the tennis court. Laura wants to practice her serves. She stands behind the line. She throws the ball up. She hits it with the racket. It goes over the net. Donald sees the ball. He hits it with the racket. It goes to Laura's side. The ball keeps going back and forth. She is a waitress. She works at a restaurant. A customer walks in. She walks him to a table. She gives him a menu. She puts a plate, fork, and spoon in front of him. He orders fried chicken. She smiles. She is very quick. She gives him his meal. He finishes eating. He gives her a big tip. Clowns are cool. They look funny. They wear face paint. They wear big shoes. They wear colorful wigs. They do funny things. They juggle balls. They make balloon animals. They do magic tricks. They tell jokes. Clowns work at many places. Sometimes they perform at parties. Sometimes they perform at circuses. They make people laugh everywhere. She wants to get across the lake. She sees a boat. There is a sailor in it. The sailor stops the boat. She gives him some money. He rows the boat. She sits in the boat. It is brown. It is made of wood. The boat reaches the other side. She thanks the sailor. She 
gets out. She starts reading a book. It is hard to understand. The words are very advanced. She does not know what they mean. She gets a dictionary. She wants to know what facile means. She finds the word. It means too simple. She looks up other difficult words. She rereads the book. She understands it better. Robert plays catch with William. Robert throws the ball to William. The ball is too high for him to catch. The ball goes over the bush. It is in the neighbor's yard now. The boys knock on the neighbor's door. Mr. Carter opens the door. They ask if they can get their ball back. He is mad. They say sorry. He says it is okay this time. He finishes watching a scary movie. His parents tell him to go to sleep. He goes into his bed. He turns off the light. He cannot fall asleep. He keeps thinking about the movie. He is scared of the dark. What if a ghost attacks him? He goes to his parents' room. He sleeps there. Betty opens up her present. It is a snow globe. She shakes it. Glitter falls down. She looks inside the globe. It is Santa Claus. He has a white beard and a big belly. He has a bag of presents. He only gives gifts to good kids. Betty is a good kid. She hopes Santa Claus visits her. She gets into her car. She puts on her seat belt. She starts to drive. She drives at a good speed. It is not safe to drive too fast. It is also not safe to drive too slow. The traffic light is yellow. She slows down. The traffic light turns red. She stops completely. She waits. It turns green. She drives. You can do a lot of things at the beach. You can lie down on a towel. Remember to put sunblock on. You don't want your skin to burn. You can make sand castles. Show your creativity. You can surf in the water. Watch out for the big waves. Finally, you can watch the sunset. The oven makes a sound. The apple pie must be ready. She puts on an oven mitt. She takes out the pie. She puts it on the table. It smells so good. It looks so good. It is too hot. She must let it cool. She goes up to her room to wait. She has very long hair. It reaches her waist. She goes to the hair salon. She waits. She reads a magazine. The barber calls her name. She sits down. She says she wants her hair to be short. The barber cuts twelve inches off. The barber asks if she likes her hair cut. She looks in the mirror. She likes it. Margaret is at a concert. There are so many people. It is completely dark. Her favorite band is on stage. The guitarist starts strumming. Colorful lights start to appear on stage. The lead singer sings Margaret's favorite song. She cheers for the band. She puts her hands up in the air. She turns on the TV. The news is playing. She thinks news is boring. She goes to the next channel. A cooking show is playing. The chef is making a cake. 
She does not like cake. She goes to the next channel. A cartoon show is playing. It is about an elephant and a mouse. It looks funny. She puts the remote control down. She watches. She wants to buy a new laptop. It costs $1,000. She only has $500. She saves up to buy the laptop. She does not eat at restaurants. She does not buy any more clothes. She only buys things on sale. She gets many jobs. She babysits. She works at the bank. She keeps saving money. He is hungry. All the restaurants nearby are closed. He finds a vending machine. There are many snacks inside. There are drinks, too. He puts one dollar in. He wants a bag of chips. He pushes the button for chips. He puts his hand in the machine. He gets his chips. She is hungry. She wants an apple. She walks outside. She goes to her car. She drives to the market. She sees a lot of apples. The green apples look sour. The red apples look sweet. She takes a red apple. She goes to the cashier. She gives him money. She eats the apple. It is November 23rd. Parents are buying turkey. The kids are waiting to eat. The parents bring home the turkey. The doorbell rings. The mother opens the door. Her friend comes in. Everyone sits at the table. They begin to eat.